Hello. So welcome to another initial reactions. And this one is going to be on the bitter tears of Petra von Kant. It's probably a film a lot of people haven't heard of. I've said that this series is really meant to be dedicated to famous films that I haven't seen. But this film does have some notoriety. I was reminded of it the other day. I was watching an episode of Marin, Mark Marin's sitcom in which he makes reference to it. Why I want to give it a go is because it's a German film from 1972. It was directed by Rainer Werner Fassbender who is one of these directors who just gets mentioned all the time by cinema enthusiasts as being one of the greats. Over the past few years I've, I've tried to sort of familiarise myself with there are certain directors who keep getting mentioned, who keep getting brought up by different people. Ingmar Bergman would be one, Kurosawa would be another. Both of those directors are people uh, over the past few years who I've kind of delved into heavily into their body of work because up until six or seven years ago I'd never seen a Bergman movie and yet you know any cinema enthusiast will tell you that you know Bergman's the man to watch he's one of the greats and he is one of the greats uh, same with Kurosawa I, I delved hev heavily into Kurosawa's work as well and found it very re rewarding but Fassbender he, he's another a more sort of indie director if you like he's another one that just keeps getting brought up and brought up again by cinema enthusiasts and as of this week I hadn't seen a single Fassbender film I thought I actually I'd start with this one, but I actually got two in the post from Cinema Paradise. So I, I watched this one first, Gods of the Plague, which is a slightly less well-known film. And the only reason I started with this one is because it came out two years prior to Petra von Kant. So this this isn't going to be my first introduction to to Fassbender. Gods of the Plague. It's an interesting one. It's I don't know if the it was kind of an homage to film noirs of the 40s, really, but set in 1970 Munich. And I don't know if a lot of the action in the film was purposely nonsensical or whether it was just me not following what, what was going on too clearly. But, yeah, I mean, I really don't know anything about The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. I know Fassbender... When he first emerged onto on the scene, he was really he's he's always lumped in with a trifecta of new wave German directors. The other two being directors who I am familiar with, Wim Wenders, who made Wings of Desire, the classic movie about angels in Berlin, and the other one, of course, is Werner Herzog, who I'm a big, big fan of. He's still working today, he's still working very heavily in cinema and in documentary making. His documentary films, in particular, are just spellbinding. If you haven't seen any, be sure to check them out. Grizzly Man is a good place to start. But as I say, from what I gather, I think this film is meant to be one of his classics, or one of his most highly regarded films. He had a, a very prolific output, I know that. He, he made something like 30 films in 10 years. People marvel at the amount of work he got done, or the body of work he wanted to accumulate in a very short space of time. I think he died in the 80s, I'm not too sure. But I, I really know little to nothing about this film. Petra von Kant is a successful fashion designer, Arrogant, bitter and twisted after her divorce. She lives with her assistant Marlene. Oh yeah, I know which one this is. I think it's, it's two women who, who torment each other. Who silently suffers Petra's domination. So this isn't the remake of the Douglas Sirk movie. All that heaven allows, but with the with the Rock Hudson character replaced with a middle-aged woman having a relationship with a black man. I forget the name of that film. This isn't that film, <laughs> anyway. When Karen enters her life, she instantly falls in love with her and invites her to move in, prom promising to make her a famous model. But when Karen leaves her, Petra becomes... And then that's where the description runs out. So, mm, yeah... A 1972 German movie about repressed lesbianism. We're looking at here, I'm thinking. Or maybe not repressed, who knows. 
Oh, always up for a bit of lesbian cinema. Yeah, it's fine. So, yep, join me after the movie. Well, after the trailer. <laughs> It'd be after the movie for me to find out my thoughts on the bitter tears of Petra von Kant. Okay, well, it's a chamber piece. It's entirely set in one single location, one single room. The the bedroom of Petra von Kant, which is, I guess, appropriate. The central performance of Margit Karsten, Karstensen. I'm sure I've mispronounced her name. Yeah, there's two great central performances in this. One from Carstensen and I think Katrin Shark as her assistant Milena. It's an entirely silent performance from the assistant. It's one of those ones she's constantly in the background overlooking the action, completely wordless and silent, but the camera's on her at every sort of a pivotal moment in, in Petra's emotional development. It's almost like her, she represents her consciousness or her psyche sort of writ large on screen. It's kind of questionable whether that the character actually exists outside of Van Kant's head. This one very much feels, all oh night gods of the plague, this one very much feels like a more mature piece. Very progressive for 72, I, I have to say, with its depiction of a same-sex relationship or the, the basic plot is uh, Petra falls in love with another woman but the the other woman is basically just u using her I think to progress up the career ladder she's a fashion designer and the the other woman Karen basically just wants to to use it to get to the top it's kind of suggested she's probably not even homosexual at all she's just sleeping her way to the top with who, whoever she can find and this basically destroys Petra very much a mature piece sort of like Gods of the Plague which feels not amateur amateurish but the work of a, a younger man even though this was a, that one film was only made two years before I was just looking over Fassbender's filmography and he made like six films in between they, these two it's like an, an amazing output four films in a year sometimes really maturely shot like Betra's bedroom is adorned with this piece of artwork it's a piece of classical artwork I'm not sure what the, the scene is it's depicting it whether it's some biblical scene or something but there's sort of naked sort of Romany looking figures through it out it and the blocking and the staging on, in a lot of the scenes is very evocative of pre-Raphaelite arts you know that you have characters in certain scenes some in the foreground and some in the background but all but all staged it's very precisely block the film you, you get the sense that everyone's got to hit their mark and look a certain way the body language of each of the characters has to evoke something different a, a different reading of the emotion throughout the film an impressive film very a, a minimalist like i say it, it all takes place in one single location it could i'm sure it's been done on the stage sometime i don't even know if it if it was actually based on a play or not so but i, I can highly imagine that it's it's been performed on the stage at some point since the film came out so minimalist but it feels like one of those that could be endlessly uh, reappraised and so you probably notice different things on on subsequent viewings it feels very rich and textured and a lot of it is would be open to interpretation but a very simplistic accessible plot and it won't be to all tastes de definitely not it is a slow burn of a film but very good and a very brave performance for um, margit cartinson especially for the time the film starts and ends with her in bed and it it 
Yeah, yeah. It starts and ends with her son's makeup. It's almost shocking to see her in the first scene. But as as the as the film progresses, she slowly puts on her makeup and she wears different wigs throughout the film. I, I guess trying to depict the fact that this is a character who maybe hides behind a mask or a facade. And as the film progresses, the the facade crumbles, if you like. Yep, that's all I've got to say on the bitter tears of Petra von Kant. Definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. And I'll see you all next time, folks.